supposedly because of Adam's sin, we are all born with sin, question mark, question mark. Hard for me to buy that frustrated face. Okay. So, let me, let me try to kind of uh, tease that out a little more. Um, <clears throat> it's not... So, okay, first of all, there is a difference between being born into sin, right, <clears throat> and being culpable for what somebody else did. Okay? So it's not that we're in trouble for what Adam did, like as a punishment, right? That would be unjust. Okay? So, <clears throat> it's not, there's a difference between being sinful and being culpable, right? <clears throat> as in responsible for having done something wrong, right? <clears throat> Babies are born with original sin. We call it original sin. Some people don't like that label, but. <clears throat> all Christians basically agree that we're all born into that sinful state, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm struggling with. Right, so talking. that's what we're struggling that's with. That's what I'm struggling with. But that's a, historically that all Christians have accepted that. <clears throat> the problem is that, <clears throat> think of it like this. You've got this perfect system, Right? Um, remember the, the game Mousetrap with the Rube Goldberg machine, right, that you build? <clears throat> Think of it kind of like that. It's like everything has to be perfectly aligned to get, right, to get the right thing at the end. <clears throat> what happens is that God makes it perfectly like and then Adam and Eve mess it up, right? So they sin against God by disobeying him. Um, they sin against each other in the process of that, right? Um, it was the woman that thou gave us unto me, right? <coughs> um, so... Uh, once that happens, it's not just human beings that are fallen. It's the whole system doesn't work right, <clears throat> right? Including the rest of creation, okay? So <clears throat> once you have this broken system, um, it's just broken. Like, you can't just... Um, you can't fix it while the ball is rolling down the track. Right? Um, <clears throat> that's not going to happen. And so, and the ball is always rolling. Right? That's the problem with this system, is the ball is always rolling. And so you can't go back and start over, and you can't, and therefore you can't fix it. Right? <clears throat> so each of us is born into that broken system. That's what kind of what we mean by fallenness, right? <clears throat> and so, um, so we do inevitably partake of that brokenness, that fallenness, and so then we sin, and there's really no escaping it. Okay, so then once we sin, we're culpable for our sin. It's not that we're culpable for Adam's sin. Adam is culpable for Adam's sin. But Adam was the original. He had the perfect system and broke it. And so we inherit the effect of that. Does that help? It was my question. So <laughs> let me just see if he's in here. See if you're, you're going to offend anyone. <laughs> no, you'll understand where I'm going with this. Sure. At the Crowder's funeral. <laughs> okay, the baby. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the prayers, you know, that was prayed was, right. you know, I won't get right. this perfectly, but uh, and the sinfulness of her life, it was forgive her, forgive her for so and so and so and so. And I thought, how do, why do we even need to say forgive her? She's only been alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, we and probably, we probably went, don't. Oh. 
you know? Yeah, we probably mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, what I do know is that children sin in the sense of being culpable for it mm -hmm. long before we, we probably realize it. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, what's the first word everybody learns? No. 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 <laughs> No, no right. say exactly. I mean, I, 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 by the way, I can't take it, take credit for that example. I learned it from someone. I learned it from someone before I had children. Right? So, Owen Patrick Brace I was listening to once, who was asked the question about original sin, and he and he just said, "Well, do you have children? Yes. What's the first word they learn? Yes or no?" No, no. <laughs> there you are. There you have it. It's the first word that they are consciously making that decision. Of course. So. Right. Right. Yeah. right. It's the, it, it, it is no that, that the child uses then to kind of assert the self. Right? Now, in a perfect system, you don't have to assert the self. Right? Because in a perfect system, there's no sin. We're all selves, but we all treat each other perfectly. We all love each other perfectly. Uh -huh. It's not a problem, uh -huh. right? <clears throat> but because of this broken world that we live in, um, it makes sense. You gotta, you gotta use no, right? <clears throat> but in doing that, you you are kind of asserting your own will over and above anyone else's. And that is sin. Right? So, um, when does a child become culpable, like, in a legal sense? I have no idea, right? I mean, that's up to God, and we don't even, it doesn't even matter to us, right? Um, <clears throat> because we don't legally hold them accountable until they're grown. Right? I mean, you, you got to reach the age of accountability, whatever that is in your culture. So, um, so it's not a, uh, there's a, there's a technical word for this, that, that, that thing inside you that, that means that you will sin. It's called concupiscence. Okay, um, uh, so that's the, that that urge to get your own way, right? Um, mm -hmm. No matter what, um, <clears throat> that urge to follow your own desires, whether they're right or wrong, right? Yeah, I was going to say, oh, you go ahead. You okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about original kids, like little children. Yeah. One gets a toy. Yeah. Others are jealous of it. Right. So either they will take it from it, tear it up, or steal it. Right. But, but do they realize that they're sinning by that? That's first no, of course not. Then they, of course not. It's just they, they steal. the world we live in. Uh-huh. I would like to say something. Yes. When I was a small child, I was a wicked little beast. <laughs> <laughs> of I would say like five is the earliest I can remember doing this but I may have been doing it before I would scam my sisters out of their toys I would lay on the guilt thick and I would say I'm such a just don't good big sister <laughs> and you got all of these toys for your birthday you won't miss this little one I was just convincing enough that I could get the yeah, story. And, and we all we all recognize yeah. that mm, that that is sort of if we're honest, we all recognize that that is just sort of our natural state unless we work at doing it another mm -hmm. way. Well, even as adults, we're always looking at somebody else's clothes. Absolutely. Oh, that's nice. And, you know, it's it's hard to... Right, exactly. But it's hard to get to that point where you go, that's just nice for you, right? Without that tinge, that little... And you can, and we all know that it's there, and we, and, and we, you know, we get over it, right? 
both for ourselves and others, right? When you get compliments or something, you, you know that might not be pure, but it's a compliment. You accept it and you, you know, gracious, graciously, and and you let that person deal with it, their own stuff, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So here's the other kind of part that I really meant to write on there. Uh, but yeah. Part of the reason I, I have always had that problem, you know, accepting the, that is um, mm -hmm. because it says in the Bible, <laughs> mm -hmm. in the image of God, he created them, man right. and woman. Right. So <clears throat> did he create Adam and Eve perfectly in the image of God, as it says, and uh -huh. then everyone that followed after were not made in the perfect image of God, or are we all born in the perfect image right. of God? Right. So there's, <clears throat> the debate rages, right, theologically over what exactly it means to be made yeah. in the image of God, okay? Yeah. Just that concept in and of itself. Yeah. Um, but we can generally kind of boil it down to, you know, real sentience, reason, um, you know, uh, in, in one sense, animals can't love the way humans and God can love, right? <clears throat> um, free will. Uh, right, free, yeah, free free choice, mm -hmm. free will. <coughs> See you guys. Hi. Um, so, uh, so we, we can we can say it, at the very least it includes that. It might be a little more or a little well, something slightly different, but it, that that's. That's part of it, right? Um, <clears throat> so there's there's also a technical meaning to being made in the image of God. So <clears throat> um, the in the ancient world, images would be set up. Um, uh, at borders, along the roads, right? Mm -hmm. Images of who? The king. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Malak. Um, in Hebrew. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and, and what's that for? Thank you. Give him some more, because I got <laughs> really good on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, she's got, <laughs> got me going here. <clears throat> Um, so, so the image is to remind everyone to let them know if they don't know, right, that you're in this realm, right. This is the king. Mm -hmm. right? um, <clears throat> so, part of what it means to be made in the image of God is to be that kind of signpost, right. We are those images, right, for other people, uh, or, or, to, be, or right? to be the re for to the rest of creation, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that God is a little like this, right? In the in the in the the relationship between that stone image and the real king is kind of like the same degree of relationship between us and God. Right? So we're flesh and blood, but we're not God. Right? The king is flesh and blood, but the stone isn't. So, you know, there's that, that separation. It's an image. It's not a it's not the thing. Right? <clears throat> um, so that's part of it. So so when we say we're made in the image of God, um, it it at least means those things, um, in some sense. And <clears throat> Uh, and when God created us in the beginning, that was perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay? No question. There. No question. There. Okay. Um, the, the question comes in when we ask, what does that mean when we say it was perfect? Right? Because God himself cannot change. Right? At least in any way that matters. Okay? Um, there, the, again, we, we could go off into a you know highly technical theological debate. So oh, we're, no. we're not going to, right? So, <clears throat> so God doesn't change. Just like the king is the king, right? 
just because this stone image of the king gets broken or marred in some way doesn't mean it's not still the image of the king. Right? It's just broken. <laughs> okay. So, so in the same way, sin breaks us. That doesn't destroy the image of God in us. It just mars it. Okay? So we're still all made in the image of God as humans. That's part of what it means to be broken, as far as Christians are concerned. Um, but it's a broken image. And so we don't, like, when you look at us, you don't necessarily see what God is like, right? Because we're broken. But we're, it's still there. Does that make sense? <laughs> that helps. Um, that helps. Um, that helps. Um, there any biblical scripture that would give you an indication of what happens when a child is born dead? Is, um, still born. Still born. Uh, thank you. It's tragic. Um, yes. <laughs> nothing in particular. I mean, we know um, scientifically before, you know, a few hundred years ago, it was really unclear when life exactly begins, mm -hmm. right, in the womb. Um, but biblically, we've always known, as soon as you were there, mm -hmm. God knows you, and mm -hmm. therefore you're there, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and that's the, that's the tragedy of abortion, for example, yes. right? That, that we're actually, we are actually murdering mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. um, and that is clear scripturally. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we can say that. Right, but so there isn't in that sense there isn't really a difference between a baby dying in the womb, right, or dying after, you know, postpartum, mm -hmm. you know, to use the you know technical language. Like that. Um, so I was going to say after birth, but you know, uh, after being separated from the mother's body, right, postpartum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got it. So, so. Um, yeah, so there's, there isn't any kind of technical difference there as far as God's concerned. Mm -hmm. um, there is for us, obviously, because it's a slightly different experience, mm -hmm. um, but for the mother particularly. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but there's not really... Um, we, don't have to, we don't have to try and figure out what happens differently to that baby, say, than to the five-day-old who right. dies. Right. 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 Um, uh, spiritually and eternally, mm -hmm. right? Um, neither of them would we hold culpable for anything, mm -hmm. right? Um, but of course, they're they're born broken, like all of us, mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah, but God deals with that um, in in Jesus. So. Well, it's yeah. like when my child was born, still born. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And receive the last rites. Yeah. Sure. Uh, in the hospital I was in, sure. um, they were like, what? When my priest came in and said, you're going to get last uh -huh. rites. Uh -huh. I said, but, he said, no buts. Just leave me out. Right. And that was such a relief for me. Right. That that was before. Mm -hmm. Right. Catch, what did you say? He's a what? What did he say? What he said was, um, he's going to give my, my son. Right. Last rites. Yeah. And the people in the morgue said, but why? And he, and said, he said, no buts. No buts, just leave me alone. Oh, okay. So he gave them last rites, and that, yeah. right. that right. gave me great comfort. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and that's, that's, what's that's <laughs> perfectly acceptable. Mm -hmm. that's, that's no problem at all. That's um, e even, I mean, I did not deal with this because I had a different uh, uh, experience in a different place. But I had plenty of classmates in seminary who did their clinical rotation in uh, uh, hospitals and dealt with mm -hmm. right babies who were who were who had died. Um, and 
so everyone who went through that, I mean, we had conversations about baptizing already dead babies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because because God knows and God will figure it out. Right, right, right. now, you're just not going to argue theology with this right. grieving, mm -hmm. exactly. you know, mm -hmm. these grieving parents. Um, so that technically would be wrong, mm -hmm. but who cares? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, the last rites, I have no problem with it at all. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, well, this is a, has died. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you know. Yeah. Yeah, for the same. Yeah, right. Exactly. Pray for the pray for the child. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I will say that we, mm -hmm. we were grateful that there was a nurse there who told us that she baptized our baby. Anyway, right. it, it gave us comfort mm -hmm. to know that. I knew uh, I, I knew in Philadelphia. I knew a woman who had worked. She was retired when I knew her, but she had worked as. Uh, as a nurse in uh, labor and delivery. Mm -hmm. And she told stories about conditionally baptizing mm -hmm. right, <laughs> children, because it doesn't take a priest to baptize. Yeah. Right? right? Um, and, you know, children who had either died or even been aborted, mm -hmm. but then, you know, she had to dispose of and she would just. Um, your heart. So, yeah. But, I mean, it, it breaks your heart. It's also true that the world is broken. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. and, and, and this is just a sign. And I'm, I'm teaching this sixth grade uh, art appreciation <laughs> class right now. Okay. So I'm kind of having fun with it. But um, <clears throat> you see older art, like medieval and particularly Renaissance art, and we'll get this way and, and slightly later, um, there's actually a technical word for it. It's called a memento mori, a, a remembrance of death. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember that we will die. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll see pictures with like a skull, right? And you're like, what's that doing there? <laughs> That's what it's doing there, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's a famous painting of John Donne uh, when he was the. Um, I mean, everybody knows him as a poet, but he's also the, the dean of, of St. Paul's Cathedral mm -hmm. in London. Um, and uh, it was a clergyman. So there's this famous painting of him in his death shroud, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's John Donne as if he were dead, right? And he had that painted for himself. Wow. Just oh. memento mori, right? Um, <clears throat> That did yeah, eventually it, become fashionable and then became a little sick. Right. <laughs> but the yeah. original purpose still yeah. stands. The original yeah. purpose still stands, yeah. right? Yeah. And we might not do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I mean, we, we laugh about Archbishop Cranmer because he was he had married. He went abroad and met all the reformers in Germany, and he had married one of the daughters. And then he came back, and, and Henry VIII made him Archbishop of Canterbury. Don't. And, and the king broke with Rome, but he was still really Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. right? He didn't like his clergy married, but he liked Thomas because he'd helped him out, and, mm -hmm. and so he made him Archbishop of Canterbury. So, so um, one of the stories, and I don't know how much this happened, one of the stories about the Arch Archbishop of Cranmer is that when he, when he traveled, right? I mean, a lot, of, a lot of times they would travel on barges up and down the river, mm -hmm. right? And when he, he uh, traveled, he always traveled with his coffin, right? Because it was fashionable at that time, mm. right? The memento mori, right? But the, but the dirty little secret, the, the, the dirty little open secret was that actually his wife was in the coffin. <laughs> so, so, because she wanted to travel with him, but he couldn't travel like openly with a wife, and so. Oh, well. So that, I don't know how much that happened. It's a story. I like it. I like, I like the story. Uh, I did. Which is fun. Hey, honey, and so remember that cruise we're gonna take next year? <laughs> <laughs> you went in a speedboat. Don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. So, I found a way. So I don't. I don't remember how we got on. Oh, I know how we got on the memento mori. It's yeah. just. It's just, you know, we all die, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes babies die, sometimes old people die, sometimes in between you die. Um, but we're all going to die. 
Um, and so, and we're all going to know people who die and love people who die. And that's just the way the brokenness of this world works, right? I mean, that is the, the, um, the, there, there's some debate as to whether when God says, you know, if you eat of the fruit, you will die, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's some debate about whether that literally means there was no physical death or whether that mean, mean, just means that the, the consequences of death, the spiritual consequences of death are such that now it's a separation that really is painful, right? Um, <clears throat> but either way, right, that... Uh, that separation is painful for us um, because the world is broken. And, you know, we break it. Like, it's us. You know, what's the problem with the world? I am. Well, mm -hmm. some time ago, we've seen a movie, and I don't mm -hmm. remember what the title was, mm -hmm. but that young man, like four years old, that said he woke up in heaven. Uh, that, yeah. That... <clears throat> He met his sister that mm -hmm. he didn't know he had. Right. And that's, and that's why I was wondering. <clears throat> that's the one detail of those kinds of stories mm -hmm. that makes me wonder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Usually I go, really? Did we need that? But that's like, that's like one, the one yeah. detail of those sorts of stories that yeah. I go, huh, really? Yeah. And there's no way you could have known that mm -hmm. unless, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. So so maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes we lean too much on those on those stories. I know. Right? They take, they take trust for this way. So. Right, yeah, I mean, if you can trust in those stories, why can't you just trust in Scripture and then you don't need those stories? Really, it's nice, you know, it's fun to go, oh, really, this happened. Well, well that lines up, right, with what we think. But anyway, yeah. yeah. I have a question. Yes. Do people, I don't, and I don't know if I'm scared or whatever, but I don't think of death. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I don't want to. Right. So does the average person really think of that? Eleanor has written a beautiful Eleanor has, written yeah. Yeah. Eleanor has written a beautiful original oratory about why people don't. Right, about why people don't think about death. Well, you know, I, I, she has a speech that she's giving. She's competing with this speech now. Well, wow. that's great. But you know, the reason why I don't think of death because mm -hmm. I live a life of Christ. At least I think so. Mm -hmm. So death doesn't really offend me. Right. I, I, so, I so that's the death. answer. Yeah. Right. That's the answer. Is um, once you have dealt with that, then you don't have to really worry about it, right? Um, so I, so I don't necessarily think that the culture, uh, that, that emphasizes the memento mori is necessarily more healthy than not, right? Um, it's just good for us to remember that that has been the fashion in Christendom at some times, and there is a good reason for that, even if we might think, well, maybe that's a little overboard, right? Um... Uh, most of us don't think of death because culturally we can't deal with the idea of death, right? In our culture, death is just the end. Mm -hmm. And so it's scary. And the uh, popular culture, right, has been almost entirely captured by people who actually think that way. And so they just don't think about it, yep, yep. right? Or if they think about it, they think about it in in highly elliptical ways. Like this is, I think, personally, I think this is why we have this kind of outbreak of, say, zombie uh, mm. zombie film like mm. stuff and vampires and mm. all that kind of stuff. It's because we don't like to think about death, but it's going to come out because it's part of life, right? Mm -hmm. well, you know, yeah, I remember uh, yeah. I heard a priest say is, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Right. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I think I think Venus has a good point, too, right? That, that once you do deal with this idea, mm -hmm. once you come to terms with it in Christ, mm -hmm. then it's true. Like, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And so it's not a big deal. 
Um, so, uh, I don't know what else to say about that. Just, just that uh, it's, it is important for us to remember and be aware of and come to terms with our death. Um, but just like, just like other things, I'll get to you in a minute. Um, uh, just like other things that are really important, but really shouldn't be a big deal, right? Like sex, right? It's a huge deal. But it, like, it's really important. It's like part of who we are, and it's part of you know life. But you know, I. I it shouldn't be that big a deal. It should just mm -hmm. be what marriage is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's all. But and once, all and once that's help, happening, and it's all good, mm -hmm. and it's you know in the right order, and all of that, then you don't have to think about it that much, <laughs> right? It's the people who don't have it in the right order mm -hmm. that are all you know, that are obsessed about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right? right. Death is the same way. If you don't have that in the right order. Right, then you can get obsessed about it and it becomes a big deal. Sometimes people will make a big deal about it in order to get it in the right order, to remind themselves to keep it in the right order, but it doesn't have to be, right? So, you had something to say. I was just going to throw something else into the mix here related. Go for it. <laughs> um, I think one of the most interesting like artistic explorations that I've run into is say stories about actually exploring the consequences of what would happen if you were immortal and there are right. all these fascinating stories about people even people who um, stay young and beautiful forever mm -hmm. who are searching for death because they're just so tired. Right. Mm. And, sure. right. Um, so and you get that all the way from ancient mythology mm -hmm. all the way through, yeah, modern stuff. And so mm -hmm. I, th I think it's very interesting because, I mean, in a perfect world, we wouldn't get tired, but right. <laughs> it's kind of messed up right now, and we do get okay. really, really tired. Right. And I'm only 18, and I get really, really tired. <laughs> I know, I know. Wait until you're 80. You got a long Yeah, wait, yeah, wait until yeah, you're 80. She says, wait until you're 80. Oh, okay, well. Sure well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else on death and dying <laughs> and sin? Thank you. You know, it's kind of ironic. Yeah. I don't think of death at all, honestly. Uh-huh. But when I pray, <laughs> I ask God to know good quality of life. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's important to remember that death, when it, you know, the consequences of sin is, is death. Mm -hmm. But when we say that, we mean death as broadly speaking as possible, right? So all the, all the aches and pains and all of the, you know... Uh, the, the whole process of aging and um, you know diminishing powers and abilities and you know the the pain of losing other people and like all of that is what we mean when we say the wages of sin is death, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Anything else? What time is that, Lucy? Noon. Noon. Uh, yeah, almost right at. Right at noon? Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? I'm not going to pull another one now since we're already at noon. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in our broken state, you do not allow us to go on forever broken. So in that sense, we thank you for death. We ask you to uh, give us your life, which is real life, and to help us uh, serve you and please you in all that we do. We ask this all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Amen. Amen.